Okay, so this is a, a explanation for how to use a, how to read the DNA letter on AgroStyle. So for the lab, we use the one KB DNA letter. Uh, so this is uh, on the left. That's what the menu says. So the this is what the menu says. So how the DNA one uh, KB letter going to look like on the AgroStyle. For this one, it's 0.7 percent agarose uh, but a different percentage. Uh, the pattern is the same. It's just uh, uh, some 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 portion will be more compact than the other. So if you there are a few <coughs> uh, a few mark or a landmark you want to look at. The the brightest one is here. That's one kb. If you look on the gel, you see the brightest band. That should be one kb, and then. Uh, if you look around, there's also a 3 KB here as a landmark. Some, and then you look on the, this is the actual gel. So that one should be 1 KB. That's the brightest band, 1 KB. That's, that's a 1 KB band. So, and this, and this is the actual sample. It's close to this 1 KB and between 1 and 0 0.75. So this one, maybe it's 0.9 or I don't know, maybe point A, something. If you want to really know this, we have to plot this on a standard curve and then find out. But usually in practice, we just, I guess, I mean, not often we actually need to know that very accurate, but we can estimate this maybe point 0.9, point 0.8. But in the exercise, we actually ask you to do a standard curve and then find out on the curve how precise, well, roughly how precisely that size is. And if we we can also go to APE since you you know the sequence of the plasma and you know how the enzyme going to cut. APE should also tell you what kind of band you supposed to see. So, and if this is your plasma to cut, and you should label the gel and either way say say one two three four, uh, and so, sorry, and uh, you label the gel, sorry. Oops. Uh, you label the gel, uh, and then the uh, at the bottom there's a legend that say legend. You, you explain say one is what sample uh, plasmid uh, cut. No, uh, plasmid uh, cut. Well, cut with enzyme say APA one, XBA one, something. I, I, that's your figure legend, and well here actually this is the example here. Right? That's just a different end. In your case, that should be XBA one, APA one, and you have just one, two, three. Yeah, and the other one you say uncut. And some of you may load the gel in different way. You, you may load the gel say, uh, cut, uncut, cut, uncut, cut, uncut. It in in any case you should label the gel in a way you load it. And then, uh, that's your result. in in your uh, in your re uh, in your tag you should discuss uh, in in the APE uh, what kind of expect expected uh, fragment uh, you should see, and then the actual gel. If it's not the same, then you want to discuss what's the problem. Right? You may load it on the wrong lane, or you may switch the uh, cut and cut. Oh, oh. You just say, I don't know what happened, but I okay. suppose to see this, I didn't see that. Can you just repeat one more time what we should include in the explanation of the lower plane, the location? This from the beginning of the paper. Uh, basically, on the right hand side, that's the example gel picture okay. with label. But in, the, in your figure legend, you should uh, explain number one what it is, number two, number three, number four. And then uh, you know the, from the APE. You know what the uh, expectation is. The APs tell you you should see two band or three band or five band, and on the gel, do you see that? Uh, right. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, something you should expect from APE and DNA sequence analysis, 
and then actually on the gel, do they match or not? Okay. So, okay, so then the, here is the standard curve exercise. Uh, so how do we actually estimate size in a more accurate way? So I'm going to say this is, you can, you can use a ruler to label the gel. Okay, so this is probably 7.8, this is probably 6.5. 5.4, uh, 4.5, something you, you put, and then you also know the size, 1 kb, 0.75, 0.5, 0.25, this is 1.5, right, so I'm just give a few examples like that, and then I go back to the R studio, and they are already put the data there, so the distance in uh, centimeter, the distance in centimeter and uh, and the top is the extra size. I didn't go too long, uh, but if you you can you can decide. Sometimes if the gel is too uh, uh, hard to see, you don't have to go that long. But here here's the on the top is the size ladder. At the bottom is the distance. And then I plot. This time when once you do a regular plot, you see that actually is not. A line that is what is a curve. How do we change this to a line? It turns out if we do a log transformation of the DNA size and then plot it again, it becomes a line. So this is a log linear. For the so the for the for the agarose gel ladder is a log linear. So and the rest of them basically the same. Uh, once we found it's a log linear, all we need to do is just do a log transformation of DNA size ladder and then find it out. So we can, so let's say there are two unknowns, 4.3 and 8.5. This is 4.3, this is 8.5. Right, and then we, yeah, the unknown is there. Well, uh, why? Is, that's not right. Uh, something is not right. So let me, let me just rerun everything. It looked like uh, I got the wrong answer. Yeah. Uh, oh, I need to. I, uh, I know. I need to to attend to the power of that. Sorry, that's right. Because uh, remember that the, that's a linear. So there, that's the size. Uh, that's uh, so it's actually point nine five. So it's if depend on depend on how accurate that is, but. Point A is it's not point A, point A seems to be all point nine five. Uh, a different one is point one A if you really want to be more accurate. Yeah. So okay, so I can put it on the curve. Alright. 